teenagers happen to be women and we don't think like boys do <laughs> and so we find it hard to understand where they're coming from yeah? and it's something that we as teachers really need to address yeah? and we need more male teachers <laughs> both both ways both ways yeah. um, No, no, no. The, the, the young men that I teach are trained and the young men that I see working with young children in primary schools are exceptional, um, exceptionally good at doing just that. And I think it's, it's, it's something about expectations and identities. Yeah. Um, but I think we need to let go of being the female early years teacher and think in different ways, yeah. and not dominate. These young boys need people who understand them. Uh, and whether that's a female teacher or a male teacher doesn't really matter, as long as we can understand where they're coming from. Uh, and I think the, the huge emphasis on reading means reading a book uh, is very problematic for boys, because boys are much more likely to dip into an encyclopedia or read a superhero comic than they are to sit down and read a book, a storybook. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> one piece of research that which took place a very long time ago, actually, in the uh, beginning of the 1990s, when we introduced um, standard attainment tasks at the age of seven uh, in UK schools. Uh, one of the tasks, of course, was uh, literacy, and we asked children some questions about a piece of writing that they read. So the child read this piece of writing by themselves, and then their teacher asked them two or three questions. And the first two years that these were done nationally, across the board, with the same book, every classroom, every teacher did this with the seven-year-olds. Uh, it was a storybook, a fairy tale, right? And the analysis of the results was that consistently boys, boys failed, right? They didn't understand the story, they couldn't tell us what the title was, they couldn't point out these particular words within the text, and so on. The third year, we used this as a standard text, uh, a storybook, but this time this storybook was quite factual. It was about animals that lived in a pond, right? <laughs> This time, the boys scored better than the girls. So it depends on the reading material, yes? <laughs> so it's, it's, it's not even the style of questions. It depends on the reading material. And that's about this developing identity. Boys shouldn't be interested in fairy stories, so they're not. <laughs> yeah? Girls shouldn't be interested in how cars work, so boys are. <laughs> It's developing identities. <clears throat> Use of text. Right. Um, games, board games, <coughs> computer games, uh, and other outside the classroom situations, the third space, right, give lots of context for using literacy skills. So bringing those into the classroom or taking the children physically out of the classroom into other situations does support particularly boys because it contextualizes their learning. They can see the reason for doing it. <clears throat> uh, simple decoding of text, as those SATs tests did, right? Um, is very problematic right? because it decontextualized the reading. Right? What has this got to do with me? A story about princes and princesses in a tower. Yeah, this is not about my life, my identity. Yeah? I'm not going to understand it. Uh, however, I learn the rules about spelling or phonics or you know, punctuation, I'm just not interested enough to apply the rules to that situation. However, give me a, a comic, right, or an advertising leaflet about this latest uh, type of car that's on the road, and I will use the rules like phonics <laughs> and spelling uh, because I'm interested. Yeah? So it's using the rules of literature.
literacy within the proper context, rather than accentuating the rules as a decontextualised, um, established way of reading. Yeah? The rules are there and we should supply the rules when and as the children need them, but we shouldn't set out to teach the rules separately from the actual text that we're using. So literacy really is a holistic approach, right? It's not just about a set of rules, it's not just about books, it's not just about what happens in the classroom, it's about a whole complex, interrelated, dynamic situation where children are using and coming across literacy in their daily lives, everywhere. inside and outside, the home, the third space, so all spaces that children occupy contextualise the process of literacy and the process of literacy is speaking, listening, reading and writing and it's in that order as well. This is the hierarchy, we have to speak Yes, once we start speaking and that child starts crying at six weeks old, that will turn into listening, yeah? And later on, then there'll be the reading, yes? I can read my name, I can recognise the initial on the McDonald's on the corner because my name is Martin, it begins with the same M. <laughs> uh, and the writing comes last because fine motor control and actually forming those letters right, is the most complex skill of all these four. Yeah? So we have to take the children on a lifelong journey, yeah? not just a journey in the early years, from speaking to listening to reading to writing in that order. Yeah? And last... All spaces actively involve children in their learning of literacy, if we make it so as the teacher. If we make it explicit to children that you can learn to read in many different ways and in many different places, then they will. If you teach them that they can only learn to read and write at school, then that's what they will do. And they won't realise these wonderful set of skills they can use throughout their lives and in a daily fashion. Thank you very much. You've contributed fabulously to my presentation.